What's going on, golf addicts? Welcome to the Tour Junkies RBC Canadian Open 2024 DraftKings DFS preview. DB here. Pat Perry, sleeveless Pat, struggling with no AC. Um, lightning has struck his home and everything is falling apart. And uh, he's wearing a shirt with himself on it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that on the Miata. God, that's a great shirt. Shout out to Marcus for, for that shirt, by the way. Yeah. Um, I cut it myself, though. You did, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. glad you could. Can I get? I need. I need to get a cut off one of those. Yeah, you do. Um, glad you're here. We did the betting show. It was a good time. It, we got it out late because we tried yesterday, but with all Pat's technical difficulties after the lightning, we couldn't make it work. Hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you to all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Their families as well. We appreciate you. Hope you all had a a a good restful weekend with your families and friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was good for us, but yeah, we're we're late getting it started. But we don't, we don't, we we didn't want to mail it in for our Canadian Open friends. We love Canada, we love Canadians, we love those those people, and we want you guys to have a good tournament this year because your tournament gets hijacked every year by something stupid. So hopefully nothing stupid happens, and we have a great year. But we're here to talk about the DraftKings uh, DraftKings picks, uh, fades, cash plays, chalk discussion in every range. We're gonna get to it. Want to thank our friends at Swanies for gearing us out and gearing us up. Now. They don't have a. They don't make a sleeveless. Well, they do, but Pat would have to wear a by a ladies, a ladies uh, golf polo. But yeah, they don't. It's just too hot for Pat to have any Swanies gear on with sleeves on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't have any on either because I don't know why. Just well, I'm wearing a weird, crazy shirt today. But yeah. otherwise, you can get dripped out with our friends at Swanies and use code TJ25 to get yourself 25 percent off the entire order. Men's, women's, juniors, all on there. Everything but your dog can get Swanies put on it. It's beautiful, man. So we got Pat and Joggers a couple weeks ago. We saw the OOTD. It looks amazing. He's now a Joggers guy. Talked to him. You know, love hung out, him. Hung out with Pat a little bit over the weekend. Talked about how much he likes him. So if Pat can do it, you can do it. Just believe in yourself, okay? And click Swanies. Click the link, Swanies.co. TJ25, 25% off. Let's get to it, Pat. Top of the board on DK. Rory McElrory at 12-1. All the way down to Adam Scott at 9K, this top-tier range. You know, I don't know. I haven't been on Twitter a whole lot. Um, I don't I don't know where people are going. I don't know what, what people are doing. But I would imagine Rory's going to be, obviously, as he should be, pretty popular. He will be. Yes. I think Lauren is going to continue to stay popular, even though people are – I think people are – I think – you know, I think a couple weeks ago – now, remember, we started the Noren train. The, yeah. uh, the inaugural Rape Whistle Buddy Bet of the Week, we started that. Like, now it feels like forever ago. It was probably two months ago. And, and and he's just continued to be fantastic. And now it doesn't even feel – it doesn't even feel – I don't. it doesn't even feel dangerous anymore. Like, we've we've gentrified the parking deck that he's – it just feels – there's there's lighting everywhere. There's those, there's those police poles – like mm-hmm. every six feet where you hit the button and the police or Batman shows up. It's it all the all the riffraff's been, you know, moved to a different location. I think Eric Cole parking garage. It's all been moved somewhere else. And now Alex Norn at ninety nine hundred, I still think people are gonna be like, Oh yeah, give me that. Isn't that weird? You know, it's like it's like um another issue I've been having is I my ceiling fell out. Yeah, and you got to bring in a mitigation company, right? They got to dry things. They got to they got to um, you know mitigate some risk. I mean, you and I have basically been run Alex Norn mitigation, and we've yeah. we've removed a lot of the risk for everybody else, and we've come in and we've just allowed everybody to start to play them and, and feel comfortable about it. And I think you still should. I think we've done a good job with it. Yeah, I mean, it just feel it feels weird, but it feels right, you know. Yeah. What else feels weird and right? <laughs> is this a trick question? Like, uh, are you asking this like you're asking the class? What is, what, what is something yeah, that feels serious. weird? Yeah, what's something that feels weird but also right? Like a person? No, anything. 
If you think I'm not blowing <laughs> Tommy Ladd Fleetwood, you don't know me, sir or ma'am. Tony having fun with the drops over here. All right. While well, you think of that, speaking yeah. of Tommy Fleetwood, um, so so this will cast the characters in the 10K and above range. I mean, other than Rory, obviously. What are people going to do with Sahith, Tommy, and Shane? Are they all are they all going to be around the same kind of ownership? Or because like uh, like I don't I, I'm not really crazy about anybody below Norin in this range. Although I am interested as as potential pivots, all, all of them are up for grabs if they are super low on. But I, I just think there's a there's quite the drop off. Um, I don't know. I, I, what are people going to do with Sahith and Tommy and Lowry? Are they all going to be around the same? You think? I think they'll be pretty similar. I, I think Sahith. I think it's it's right up at the top though on the on the chalkiest folks. I think it's it's Rory and it's Sahith, and then Tommy and and Shane will be a little bit below that, along with Norin actually. So Norin probably is up there too, close to Sahith, I guess. But um, between Tommy and Shane, I, I think you're going to see. Probably a little more yeah. towards Shane. I was going to say more towards Tommy. I think he checks more boxes, and yeah, he's, but... he's been more consistent. And if the putting, if the putting narrative rules, then I think people are not going to. People are like I said in the betting show. I'm not convinced. I got to see it again for Shane Lowry to, after that nine strokes gained putting at the PGA. I got to see it again from Shane Lowry before I buy into that. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I think yeah. putting was kind of a big deal in the last one. I think um, the last one played here at Hamilton in 2019. I think it's maybe it's a little less of a deal with I don't know. We'll see. Firm, firm, fast. You know, perky titty conditions with those greens being fresh and firmed up. But I think people go to I think people go to Tommy Ladd first. I, I think Lowry is the lowest owned out of the top four. But I can't I, I can't make up where Sahith and Tommy are going to come. Yeah, I feel like Tommy or Sahith's gonna be a little bit above Tommy. Have you have you ever um have you ever gone skinny dipping at night? Oh yeah, dude. I have. That's, oh, God, that's, that's something that feels weird, but right. Example. That's the perfect yeah. example. Yeah. It feels weird, but it feels so right. Yeah, I guess the first time it feels weird. Yeah. The first time you're like, whoa. Yeah, that is, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, dude. I've definitely I've definitely enjoyed that. Um, bro, if you haven't, if you're like, what's the, what's the, if you're a certain age, at what point should you be, you, if you're a dude, especially, because it feels so good. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, like what age do you have to be like, look, man, you're this year's old and you've never done it. You got to go, you got to find the nearest pool right now and go do it. That's yeah. unacceptable. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's like a, it's like a thing you just, it's a coming of age thing. I kind of right? feel like if you're if you're out if you're over the age of 25. 25, yeah. 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 If you made it through your college years or younger, you know, low, younger 20s and you haven't yeah. done that, bro. I don't care. I'm giving I don't, you till 25, but then it's yeah. like, yeah. Then you got to find if it's a if it's a fountain at the mall, like you got to figure <laughs> that out. You, you got to go get that done. Yeah. So, um, okay. Producer Tony says, when was the last time y'all skinny dipped? <laughs> well, I mean, think how old we are. So, you know, but we, I, I can say I got, it was before 25. I did, did what I needed to do. Well, that was the first time. He's saying when's the last time. The last time for me. <sighs> was probably three summers ago. Oh man, I feel that's bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I feel like happy to hear that. That makes yeah. me smile. I, well, I don't think it's not, that, that I, can't even weird. I can't even remember the last time. <laughs> yeah, three summers ago, Isla Palms, Charleston. Praise God, baby. Praise God. Uh all right. <clears throat> anyway, that got that, that got weird. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> um, all right. So so if if all the chalk is kind of up top. 9,800. Let, let's go from like Cam Young down to Adam Scott. Who's your Who's your favorite play in that range? If we get a little, if we get a little, uh, if we get a little pivot action down here, man, I love Mav. I'm loving Mav McNeely this week. 
I want to bet them outright. I don't know if I can pull the trigger and put them on the card, but I really like the way he's trending. He's top 15 in the BTN model. Um, I'm heavy on the BTN model. You know, our, our, our friends over at BTN, you know, the, the folks that help us put the model together, they've given us some great intel this week. And, and so I think, so I'm really going to be trusting of this model. And I feel like the way, what we've seen from Mav over the last, you know, several weeks, really, um, I think we've, we've seen some good things out of him. He's just trending, especially the last two weeks, um, you know, you look at just last week alone, you know, gained over six and a half strokes tee to green, gained off the tee, gained almost two off the, on approach, around the green was over four, and then the putting was, you know, not great, um, but that's kind of like, he, he, he sort of putted average for him anyway, so I'm okay. Yeah. I really like Mav um, down there at, at 9,200. Um and I think that's probably it. I mean, I could see me moving to Cam Young if he's got lower ownership. I think I'm out on Cam Young. I, I like Mav and I like Adam Scott. Yeah. I think Adam Scott's quietly just solid right now. He feels – honestly, if I were playing cash, I think I would play Adam Scott in cash. I mean, he missed a cut at PJ, which was so stupid, but – yeah. Other than that, he just feels he feels solid. He's actually like in my in my model, like last thirty strokes game putting, he's twenty eighth in the field, which for Adam Scott is pretty good. The putter's gonna come around. I, I don't know. I, I kind of like Adam Scott, but I, I I do like the mad play as well. I wonder how popular he'll be. I think Burns might be the least popular. I think you're right on Burns, I, and I think Adam Scott is a good cash play. I, I agree. Because the only other cash play I think you could even look at in this up here is Norin. is um, is Norin. But I, I don't know if I want to spend up that much for Noren so in a cash game. So I, I think Adam Scott would be the play. All right. Um, let's move to the 8K range. Uh, let's see. Before we do, let me show you my – we talked about this on the uh, betting show, but just quickly to show the, the, the fine folks in DFS, uh, my thoughts on this little underdog play. Round one underdog play. This is what I got. We just talked about one of these guys. Adam Scott, lower than 69 strokes. That's one under or better for round one. I believe it. I'm going with the ghost of Eric Cole. Uh, higher than 69 strokes. So he's just got to shoot par or worse the way he's been playing. I mean, my Lord. We just talked about him too. How how now the Eric Cole uh, the Eric Cole parking garage is now the wor- is now the, the scariest parking garage in all of uh, in all mm-hmm. the town. Yeah, and then I'm going Taylor Pendrith, a guy who we're going to get to here in a minute. Higher than three and a half birdies, that three banger, three combo there. You could do the standard play, gets you to six, a little more than six x your money. If you flex it and you get all three right, a little more than three x. If you miss one, you just break even. That's my round one gut call, kind of first impression underdog play. If you're not playing underdog, you need to get in there, huh? Get in there and figure it out because it's uh, it's good stuff. Um, the link is in the description. And if you're wondering if you're eligible to play underdog, here you go. Look at the map on screen. If you're in the yellow, you can play Pick'em, which is what I just showed you there. Best ball, you can play in, I believe, even more states now, including Michigan even. So if you've been waiting on best ball drafts, those are a lot of fun. Uh, you need to get involved in that. Link in the description gets you a kind of a free special play, almost free special play, plus up to $250 in bonus cash. So, and the underdog plays have been popping in the Discord this season, especially for your boy in DB's Bomb Shelter and the props chat. We have a ton of smart people in the Discord tackling props every single week, including our friend GS Luke in there dropping some plays. Uh, kind of cooled off a little bit this past week, went six and five round one, but, but we broke even because my two favorites hit us uh, for a nice little return there. But uh, cooled off a little bit, but we're not done yet, people. So we're not done yet. So just hang on. It's Stick with us. Stick with me. All right, 8K range, Pat. We've got, uh, let's see, where where's my 8K range? we got Aaron Rye all the way down to defending champion Nick Taylor, who's playing like trash. I don't love this range. I, I think a lot of people are not going to like this range. Therefore, I think this was good. This is where you could definitely jump on some pivot, some pivies, some pivot pivies. Aaron Rye really pissed me off last week. I had a lot of him. And he didn't know what to do with the putter, and I needed him to finish top twenty, and he didn't finish t thirty two. But continues to hit it really well. Yeah, um, 
if if he can break even or or whatever with putters with the, with the putter, he certainly is hitting it nicely. So potential leverage there. Similarly with Keith Mitchell, all freaking season can't putt, but I'm not doing Keith Mitchell again this week. I am I am intrigued by Tom Kim. I, I'm intrigued. He he's he ranks horribly in my model. Yes, he ranks horribly. But he's been bucking his head a little bit though with the, yeah, like you a know. little uh, some signs of life. He's not putting all four together, but there's signs of life. I kind of like it. Um. I kind of like Mackenzie Hughes again. Me too. I've yeah. liked him a couple times this year. I think it worked out one time. I, PGA, I think, you can't look at you can't look at Valhalla. It just wasn't a course for him. It was not. So. Um, the iron play is what what worries you, but but I do think the around the green play, the putting is going to save him a lot. I think there's going to be some missed greens here with the the greens being so firm and bouncy. So for me, I think my three, if I'm going to look at these guys, and they're going to be some low on pivots. My favorite pivot in here is probably going to be Mackenzie Hughes, number one. Um, and then I'm going to have to decide between Tom Kim and Aaron Rye. But those are the three plays in here that I like. If I were going to play cash in this range, God, I, I don't know. I might actually just uh, I might just avoid it and do like two in the 9K and skip this range. Because I guess I'd go Aaron Rye. I, yeah, guess I think would. Aaron Rye would be the cash play in this range. I, I do like Aaron Rye. I'm with you there. Um, Aaron Rye feels really overpriced, though. He does, but I think in this kind of field too, you sort of, some of these players you just sort of have to, you know, just swallow the medicine on that. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Tom Kim's interesting as well, just based off the form. Um, EVR interests me a little bit here. He he does show up pretty well in the BTN model. He's 16th there, um, you know, at 8,200. Um, it, it always seems like he's he's just he's a cut maker. I don't know. The upside is sort of not a lot. You know, he did have a T four at the at, at Myrtle Beach, and you know that really good round and the final round at, at the Honda. You know, that gave him that really good finish. But but other than that, he's kind of it just hangs or seems to hang around like that. You know, like T thirty three range or whatever. But I, I still think EVR is is worth a look. That's probably it for me in this in this range. Yeah, I'm I'm good, and I, and I'm going to pass on Nick Taylor, defending champ duties, not playing well at all, mm -mm. Uh, and he will be low owned, but I don't think I really want it. And Akshay seems to be kind of lost too since his yeah. since his Masters Valero, I guess Heritage run. I, I don't know. I don't I don't love that either. Um, all right, let's let's get to the let's get to the seven K range. Starts off Mark Hubbard, your boy. And goes all the way down to Piss Bear, Hissatumfia, down there, it. 7K. There we go. All right, tell me who you like here. Well, I'm just going to continue to like Davis Thompson. Um, top 20 last week was T2 at the at Myrtle Beach. Also another one that shows up fairly decent in the uh, in the model here. Yep. I, I like Davis Thompson. Um, you and I both talked about Matt Wallace and on the betting show, and I think he he makes a lot of sense. He's he's another guy that's been in pretty good form. Um, and then absolutely my favorite Canadian in the field is Taylor Pendrith. Um, one obviously a few weeks ago at the CJ Cup, followed that up with a top ten at Wells Fargo. He has said he he, he was battling a little bit of a um, I think it was a shoulder injury or something that that's finally kind of gotten better. Now, he didn't play well at the PGA, but I still think this is um, – he seems to just be, you know, just really kind of getting the whole game back. So – and and Pinter shows up extremely well. He's fourth in the BTN model. So I do like him a, a ton at 7,600. Last one I'll probably go to is, um, you know, I think um, – it, it, this is another one you mentioned on the betting uh, show too that I thought about was Kevin Yu, another guy that shows up well, third in the BTN model, had that T four at, at at Myrtle Beach. Um, so I think I think Kevin Yu, Taylor Penderth, Matt Wallace, and Davis Thompson would be my favorite four in the seven K. Um, I can't I, I can't disagree with any of those. I like a lot of names in here as potential pivots. I don't think I'm going to go overboard with any of them. Other than Pendrith, although Pen Pendrith is going to be chalk, man, he's probably gonna yeah be he'll be he'll mega be chalk for sure. Yeah, um, he, yeah, that's going to be tough. I, I think there's a lot of good opportunities to pivot here, and with lineup construction, like if you do 
you know, if you do like a Sahith Norin or a Rory Norin or something like that up top, you can you can stay in the seven k range and have some good options and kind of spread it out. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go low here with you. I'm gonna get low. I'm gonna start at the bottom. I actually think I think Piss Bear, I think Thorbjorn is in play. Uh, yeah. It's a listen. This is a, this is a crappy field. Okay, it's a crappy field. So just pay attention to that. I know some of his finishes, whatever, but I, I he hits he hits fairways. And he's a really he's a solid putter, and he's usually pretty good around the greens. And I think that's going to come in handy here. Seven K on the number. I I think he's I think he's I think he's decent. Um, I think he's got good made cut up equity, and then I think his upside is a top twenty, top fifteen even. But one of my favorite pivots down here, and I don't know what people are going to do with him because he, he doesn't check a ton of boxes, but it's Seamus Power. I talked about on the betting show. Mm-hmm. I, like, Seamus Power could win this tournament. I mean, he's won on the PGA Tour. He's got a bunch of good, top, you know, decent finishes here lately. Heritage, Wells Fargo, Valspar was okay. Got some mixed cut, you know, missed cuts in there in the past too. Typically a better putter than he has been lately. I don't know what's going on with that. Good around the green. Iron playing off the tee game is solid. I think Power is a solid pivot. Um, and I mean, this, this guy can't putt worth crap, but uh, again, as a possible pivot, if he gets it figured out, Doug Gim at 74, I'll go with him. And I think Ben Griffin is another possible pivot. Now Griffin, terrible, you know, not, not really great, uh, off the tee. And sometimes the approach play can be sus, but really good putter. I think there's a ton of pivot options here. I know we named a bunch of players in this range. I mean, I guess the guys I don't like, I don't want to pay up for Hubbard at 79, given what he's doing. Um, I don't really want anything to do with Hoy guard. I don't think this is a great Hoy guard spot. Mm. I don't like Fox. I don't like Svensson. I'm, I'm not buying Bobby Mack yet. Still Hostler's irons are still broken, but there's a lot of names in here. I like I'll have to narrow them down. You'll yeah. get it in the discord. Okay. Okay. Uh, six K range. Let's go to there starting with. Kind of Sam Stevens, Luke List, all the way down, big range here, down to uh, Ben Martin, Martin Laird, Garrick Higgo, Zach Johnson, Parker Cootie, Shez Tickle, Reavy. In this range, hmm. <laughs> Wee. I, I, I know one you like. Um, there's, there's, there's some good names in here. We talked about on the betting show names like Kevin Tway. Yeah, Check like a lot him. of boxes. We talked about. Uh, Kazire, love him this week. I talked about Ryder a little bit. Uh, other possible pivots if those guys are popular. Now, your boy Mac Meisner at 65, yes. he's probably going to be popular in this spot. I think he is. I mean, people have figured it out. Guys, has got a lot of upside. He's got a lot of top 25s on his starts that he's had the last two weeks, both in the top 15. Um, so I think Meisner's is going to be a little bit chalky for the 6K range, but I still like him. Um, what about, who else was I looking at up here? Um, I mentioned just from just like short game putting, like spike performance stuff, SH Kim a little bit. I don't love it, but just a little bit. It's kind of getting, getting, getting me a little bit. Um, I think Grayson Sig is interesting. I think you're going to get a lot of good, I mean, I, I, I'd be shocked if he misses the cut, Grayson Sig. Yeah. Uh, ben Silverman is a guy I mentioned on the betting show. Is a long shot, kind of top 20, accurate player, Canadian, good putter. Um, I, I could see that. You know, Bud Colley is there. Pat. Bud Colley. I don't, I don't know if I, I'm going to pull the trigger on that. I, I think, you know, somebody like a – a Dylan Wu might be interesting. Yep. You know, he he missed the cut at the Schwab last week, but really had had some solid performances before that with three three straight top thirty finishes. Um, I think Dylan Wu is probably the last one I'll go down to here. I um I think a guy who has won recently, who is super accurate, typically really good around the greens. Um. Going to be accurate off the tee, keep him, you know, not super long at all, that's for sure, but kind of long enough, kind of a bunter. But since his win, has put up some decent performances. 
Bryce Garnett. Yeah. Okay. One Puerto Rico. Followed up with T35 at the Players, 18th at the Heritage, you know, 11th at the Zurich, who cares? 35th at the PGA. And I think Bryce Garnett's kind of interesting, 6,100. I mean, you jam him in a, a real top-heavy lineup, it feels like you're going to get a guy who's going to make a cut. Yeah. I mean, Bryce has been playing confidently since, uh, since the win. In the last 30 rounds in this field, from 175 to 250, strokes gained approach, he's fourth in this field 10th in birdies are better and third in bogeys in bogeys are worse over the last 30 rounds so he's making birdies not making big numbers i i i think you get a lot of made cut equity with garnett at 6100 yeah all right let's get let's wrap it up let's do a 5k snake draft kind of ugly in here um i will say that (laughs) I i don't know that i'll dip a lot into the 5k range but let's uh let's give it a shot shall we Let's go. You Let's go first. Um, all right. I will start with uh, <laughs> you're going to laugh because I've really, I sort of moved away from him, but I'm, I'm, I'm inching my way. I'm inching my way back, coming off a T26 at Myrtle Beach and a top 10 last week. The ball striking fool, Robbie Shelton. Oh, God. You're getting suckered into Shelton after one, one week. He was good last week. He was good. Uh, I'm going with the one of the best mustaches on the PGA Tour when he doesn't shave it. Chandler oh. Phillips coming off a T12 at Colonial, um, T3 at the Valspar a couple, you know, a couple months ago. Uh, we saw him. We saw him kind of get hot there. Above average in accuracy, pretty slightly below average in distance. Um, you know, has, has has shown some form, shown some pop, made cuts recently getting through to the weekend i like that for uh for chandler phillips at a mere 5900 all right um i'll go with another one coming off of a hot hot uh tournament at t5 um the talented mr pie cootie pie cootie <laughs> a little bit of an inside joke there uh so that would be that would Pearson be Pearson. Pearson. Yeah. Yes, that would be Pearson Cootie. Uh, but if you if you watch it on TV, it's pie. If you're that's, if you're certain people that watch it, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, what to do here? Um, I mean, he's not. God dang it! If Joel Damon could freaking putt, right? He's 5,800 on a course that doesn't require you to hit it forever. He's finding a way to make the weekends. He's just not doing much else. He's just kind of skating by. God, he can't putt. I mean, his putting is horrible. But I think I think the floor is decent enough. And if he could just like, if he could just lose like one and a half strokes putting. Then we'd be good. Fifty eight hundred. Yeah. I'll go Joel Damon. Okay. Final one for me is going to be uh, the the one who plays right in your backyard, and the hat has your logo. Oh, on it. you're going to take him from me? Yes, I am. Henrik Norlander uh, is oh, playing very well. Made his last four cuts. Um, man, I don't know how this if this BTN model's right, but it's got him up there in the top ten on the model this week. So I think um, I think we got to go with Norlander there at fifty six hundred. Dang. Well, you took Chandler Phillips for me, so. Yeah, you had first pick. You could have taken him. He's right there at the top. I know, but I was trying to, I thought I, I was sort of zigging when you were, you know, so you would zag. That's what happened. Um, Man, this guy kind of burned me last week. I was I, I played him as a prop to finish top South American. He did not um, miss the cut, but he's just kind of, He's just kind of chilling. He's not done anything like horrible, but he's had some decent finishes. Mexico, Cognizant, Puerto Rico, Corrales, Zurich, CJ Cup. Very accurate off the tee. Um, kind of average ball speed. Not great around the greens, but the putting is okay. I'm going Nico. Nico Echevarria. Okay. Give me Nico. I like that one. So we got... Phillips, Damon, Nico, Echevarria, Norlander, Robbie Shelton, and Pi 
Cootie is your 5K draft. And that is the show for us. Big couple weeks coming up. You got Memorial next week as a signature event, then the U.S. Open, and then the Travelers from Cromwell, Connecticut signature event as well. Uh, and you've got a live event next week, live Houston and then live Nashville, which we will be at live Nashville. Can't wait for that. It's going to be a good time. Nash Vegas going to be lots of fun. Hopefully you'll be there if you're near the Nashville area. Pat's showing you the gun show. Good Lord. Thank you, Pat, for that. Thank you for all you had to do to make this happen. And may your screens be green people on this fine RBC Canadian open week. See you. Oh.